All right, YouTube stars, let's take exponents to the next level. So one really important thing about exponents to know is this thing called property of zero as an exponent. That's just a fancy way of saying when you have a number raised to the zero power. So whenever you have the value of any non-zero number raised to the zero, or sorry, raised to the power of zero, it will always be one. So for example, five to the zero power equals one. And before we do these examples together, I want to give you this visual because, you know, you might be able to memorize that. You might be able to realize, okay, it's raised to zero power equals one, which I know sounds a little goofy, but here, I'm going to give you a concrete example to help you remember this. This is how I always reason it in my head when I can't quite remember. So back to that video example from the first video you watched in 1A, think about when um, he recorded the video. So before anyone has shared the video, so he has not shared the video yet, he has still seen the video. So one person has still seen the video. So what I like to say with the sharing, that is like the power or the exponent. So at zero shares, right? So before anyone has shared the video, at zero shares, one person has still seen the video because you had to have someone to create it, right? The guy still saw his own video before he shared it with anyone. And so that is how you can remember this power of zero rule. Zero shares, one person has seen it. So a number raised to zero power always equals one. So let's do these three examples. I'm sure you can fill them out real quick. 15 to the zero power equals one, right? It always equals one. 0 0.75 or 75 hundredths to the zero power, again, equals one. Doesn't matter the number. If it's raised to zero power, always equals one. So two thirds to zero power equals one, of course. Okay? So no matter what, no matter what the number is, if it's raised to zero power, it will always equal one. So keep that idea in mind of before anyone has shared it, so zero shares, one person has seen it. Okay? So let's move on to what about decimals and fractions? You might have seen a little bit of a preview here. Let's talk about this first one. So we've got write 0 0.8 or 8 tenths squared, or we can, so the little two we call either squared or you can say raised to the second power, either way in expanded form and standard form. Remember, that's also called finding the value. So when I do that, okay, I'm, I got my base 0 0.8, so I'm going to write that, and I'm going to write it twice because that's the exponent. So here is expanded form, and you can write either the x or the dot, your choice, just show multiplication somehow. And then to find the standard form with decimals, here's what I like to do to do it a little bit quicker in my head. So I know 8 times 8 is 64, but I also know that I have one two numbers behind my decimal in total, one from the first factor, one from the second. So I have two numbers behind the decimal in total, so that means I need two numbers behind the decimal in my answer, so I get 64 hundredths, or 0 0.64. Okay? Now if you weren't sure, you can always multiply that off to the side, that is always your choice. Okay? So now fractions, this one's a little um, different, so if you notice, and we'll talk about this again here in a second, but if you notice, this one half has to be in parentheses then the exponent, because the exponent on the outside has to be applied to both numbers. If I only had the um, one half and then the exponent, no parentheses, that'd be like saying that the top number, the one, is raised to the third power, but not the bottom number. So you have to have parentheses around your um, fractions anytime you write it in exponential form. So we don't need it when we are writing in expanded form, so I'm going to take one half, times one half times one half, again, either use the dots or the x's. So I did one half three times because my base was one half and then the exponent was three. And so when you're multiplying fractions, I would multiply all the top numbers first, that gives you your top number, and then all the bottom numbers. So one times one times one is just one, two times two is four, four times two is eight. Do not say six because you are multiplying, not adding. So our answer would be one eighth. So don't forget that when it's an exponential form, you need to have the parentheses around it. Let's move on to a little bit more practice here. If you need to go back and take a closer look, feel free. So you've got several different practice problems here. I'm only going to do one per line with you. So I will get you started, but then you're going to um, try some on your own as well. Check with the answer key and get a teacher signature. So I'm actually going to jump over to number three here. We haven't done any with tens yet. It's still the same process. So 10 is what's being repeatedly multiplied, so that's going to be my base. And then I just need to count the number of tens. Um, 
so I can give my exponent because it says use an exponent to write each expression. So it's an expanded form. I need to write it in exponential form. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10. So I'm going to have 10 to the 7th. Base is 10 because that's what's being multiplied. And it was 7 times because I count up 7 tens. Okay, so here's one of those examples where we have the fraction, so I'm going to have to have parentheses around it. So I'm doing this number 4 here with the 3 fourths, so I've got 3 fourths as my base, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. So it's going to be 3 fourths to the fifth, but you have to have parentheses around it. If I only had um, 3 fourths without parentheses and I had my 5 up here, it'd be like saying the 3 is being multiplied uh, 5 times and not the 4. So that would change my answer. Um, when we talk about finding the value of it, finding it in standard form. So very important, you have to have parentheses around your fractions, only with fractions. So that way it's applied, the exponent's applied to both numbers. Okay? Now this time it's saying find the value, we know that means standard form, of each power. So they give it to us in exponential form. We need to find the answer, basically, the value of it. So I'm going to do this one 7 to the 4th because that's going to get kind of big here. So here's a trick of what I would do. Okay, and if you need to do a little work off to the side, that's totally fine. Please feel free to do that. You're going to need to occasionally. So here's how I do it. Anytime I have something raised to the fourth power, I always break it down into two sections. So if I think of this as expanded form, it's 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. So start with the first two. Don't try and do all of them at the same time. So 7 times 7 is 49. Well, then I know I have got another 7 times 7 later on, right? Because there's four of them all together. So I've got 49 times 49. I do that off to the side and get 2,401. So you see how I kind of chunked it, right? I did like the first two 7s and multiplied them. And then that meant I also had another two 7s on the other side. So those will give me the same answer, and then I can multiply it. That really only works when you do to the fourth power, but like I said, just do them one at a time. Don't try and multiply it all together. Do seven times seven first, then you can take it times seven if you want, and then take that number times seven, um, or you can group them the way I said. Okay, so I'm going to do number 11 here. So this is six sevenths squared, or to the second power, and so it's just saying that I've got six sevenths times six sevenths, so I'm going to do the top part first. So six times six is 36. 7 times 7 is 49, so I get 36 over 49. Okay, it looked more complex than it really was. Um, I'm going to look at number 13 now. So this is 0 0.5 to the third. So I'm going to actually think of 5 times 5 times 5, and I know that is 125. However, since it's a decimal, and I'm doing it three times, I have three numbers behind my decimal, right? I have a 0.5, another 0.5, and another 0.5. So that means I also need three numbers in my decimal for my answer, so it's really going to be 0 0.125, or 125 thousandths, okay? But you can use that quick trick of trying to do some mental math. And again, if you weren't sure, write it off to the side. Do 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, and then multiply that answer by 0 0.5 again to get your answer, okay? All right, I love these. I'm going to do number 16 here. So it's 12 to the first power, so that's just the first level. So that is super easy. It's just 12 one time, so my answer is just going to be 12. I love when it's to the first power because it's just the answer that the base is. Okay, very simple. And so it goes the other way too. If you just see a number here, you can write that as that number to the first power. Okay, those are two. So this would be the exponential form. This would be the standard form or the value. Okay, last one I'm going to do with you is over here. So even though the 13's in parentheses, that is a way you can write your exponents, but it really just means 13 times 13. Okay, 13 to the second power. So when I do that, I get 169. And I just did that off to the side, 13 times 13. Or if you happen to knew that, know that multiplication fact, then good for you, you got that in your head. Okay, but if you need to do work off to the side, please do. So you have several more to go back and look at and try on your own. Check those answers with the answer key, then get a teacher's signature. Make sure you change your tracking page to orange so I can get to you. Okay, you got this. Go ahead and practice your exponents.